I'm going to concentrate my tube down. Old bucket mouth. Down further. I got a feeling this guy's about 16, 17 inches. Look at you. You're a pro. Still there? Yeah. He's got one hook in his mouth. I'm going to try to flip him in. There you go. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Bait Cloud, bring the fish to you. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Maybe we, we, should, we shouldn't take them off. <laughs> Here, come on over on this side, Bill. So we get that nice sun in our face. Did he hit hard? He did, and he was right near the boat. I thought okay. I was pretty much done with the retrieval, and boom. Let's do like those tournament up. guys. You ready? You ready? Can you heave him in the boat? 12 pound test, it didn't break. You know what? I hate to tell you this, but we would consider this a small, small mouth. Throw really? it here. Back oh, yeah. Up. We've been getting him up to like four or five pounds. Look at you. You're a pro. You got two hooks just in the roof of the mouth. Perfect hook job. Remember I said to keep your eye on your lure because sometimes they'll follow right up to yep. the boat? It yep. looked like that guy hit. He did. Very close to the he boat. Did. You know, all kidding aside, that's a respectable start. Sure so that's is. the first fish Excellent. of the day. I always like my guests to get the first fish. Yeah. I think that's great. <laughs> Thanks for letting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You watch him take off. He's going to disappear because we've got, even though the water's clear, he's gone like a bullet. Now, Bill, I know you're a really busy guy. You work really hard. There's probably some pretty exciting things coming out of Dickies. I know you're working like on an outdoor line of clothing and stuff. Yeah. And you've got some pretty big stores. You know, I haven't been in one of the stores yet. I only see the clothing in some of the other merchandise stores. Yeah, yeah, we opened up a new store in Milton, Ontario last year. It's doing yeah. pretty well, just off the 401. So. Yeah, it's doing really good. The nice thing about that store is it showcases all our product in one location. So Good. I try Excellent. to do a good job, but, you know, depending on where I travel, I can't. I don't do a lot of the really hard work, you know, right. construction stuff, even though this is pretty demanding, as you can see, sure. right? <laughs> Many definitions to work. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I was going to take these off, but maybe we should make a few more casts. Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. The wind's actually helping us to cast, so this is good. We're out here on Lake Erie. We're probably about a mile out from shore, and it's early in the season. That's why we're wearing, wearing a hoodie, and Bill's got his thick shirt on, because it's cold. This morning, it's probably about 10 degrees, and they're only calling for a high of about 16. The nice thing about fishing this side of Lake Erie, we're in New York State, they have an all-year open season for bass. So these bass, because the water's cold, if you look on my sonar here, it's only 55 degrees Fahrenheit. The bass haven't even moved close to shore. So we call these fish pre-spawn bass. And they're pretty aggressive. That first one that hit that husky jerk came up probably from about 10 feet of water to hit that lure only about uh, two to three feet below the surface. That's what we're using. This particular one is 13 centimeters long. It's a very good bait to twitch when you're looking for fish over a big wide area. I haven't been too lucky this morning. I'm gonna see if this guy's gonna stay on. He's got one hook in his mouth. I'm gonna to try to flip him in. Oh, oh, now he's got one <laughs> hook, he had two. You know, normally we use a net. Uh oh, he's gonna, to, gotta to be careful here. Watch the hooks. If we got fish that were a little bit bigger, we'd be using a net. Maybe I should have used the net. He's thrashing <laughs> quite a bit. Come on, settle down. Okay, are you game to thumb him here? Absolutely. You, you watch the yep. trebles. Good, you're a bold man. Okay, now while you do that, 
I'm going to get the pliers. You know, it's kind of handy. I've got a little tool rack right on the boat here that's got everything there. Oh, wrong pliers. Those are the wire cutters. We don't want to do that. You know why I have the wire cutters in the boat? It's not for a good reason. Yeah, hook. If you get a hook in, right. you have to cut off the barb. Because I, I have been hooked many times, as you can imagine, over the years. And I've seen other people hooked. And what the easiest thing to do is to actually push the hook past the barb. Now, right. How the heck? I've got him just tight to the bone here. I'm just trying to get the pliers. He's not hooked deep. He's just hooked well. He wasn't going to get off, Bill. That's for sure. We're like the surgical team. ER. There we go. F-E-R. All right. Fish emergency. <laughs> Good job. Okay, why don't we just yep. gently put him in. And this water is so clear, Bill, you'll be able to see him just swim away. Nice bass. Boy. They've got tons of energy, eh, because the water's cold. Now, one thing that we're doing, you know, we're using this twitching technique because the water's still pretty cool. Here, it's about 57 degrees. And when they hit, even though the water's cold, both of us are really putting the boots to the fish, setting the hook hard and keeping the pressure on, because it's very easy for smallmouth to jump and throw the hooks, even if you're using a lure with three treble hooks like this. And we've lost a few fish this morning. We're not sure if they were all smallmouth or some of them were pike. Bill, I think we found them. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. You keep casting, because you may get another one. It's funny how they move around. I was telling Bill earlier that I was out a few days ago fishing maybe a few hundred yards from where we are now and getting all kinds of bass. We were actually trying to catch pike and uh, all we were doing is catching bass. And we went to that same area today and we only got one bass, a largemouth. So it was like the bass moved out. And bass can move a lot, especially smallmouth. I've been up north in Northern Ontario near Quetico Provincial Park where I've seen bass physically leave a small lake and go through a channel and into the next lake. So one day you can get hundreds of bass from a small lake and then go there the next day and not catch a fish. I got a feeling this guy's about 16, 17 inches. That's a nice fish. Nice small mouth. What I love about the twitch baits or jerk baits as some people call them is how hard they hit them, Bill. They just slam them, yeah. you know. Either it's a tick if they hit it with their head or just a whack. Yep. You got nice clear water. This guy's going to be put in. Look at that. Beautiful colors. Brilliant smallmouth. Green, strong. You know, I have been asked by people, if you only had one lure to use anywhere in the world, what would it be? That's a really tough question. My answer would be a Rapala Husky Jerk, and that's what I'm holding up here. This particular one is 13 centimeters long. It's gold in color. It's got a little bit of an orange belly and black back. Now, why a Husky Jerk? Well, it's a rattling, suspending minnow bait. Looks like virtually the average minnow anywhere in the world. You can fish it at any depth you want. If you add weight, you can fish it close to bottom in deep water. You can twitch it suspended below the surface, or you can fish it right at the surface if you want. So it's a very versatile bait. Now, we did really well using this lure today because the husky jerk, when you cast it out about 70 to 100 feet on the normal twitch and retrieve, it'll dive down to about 7, 8 feet. So you can actually get it to go down deeper. And a lot of times, having a twitch bait that goes down below the 5-foot mark will draw fish that are on the bottom to come up and strike it. Now, the Husky Jerk is just one of many twitch baits that are on the market. 
One that's become very popular in the last few years is called the Rapala X-Rap, and I'm holding it up. This particular one is 10 centimeters long. And again, it's a suspending, rattling lure. Works really well, but it doesn't go down as deep as the Husky Jerk. It only goes down to about two, three feet below the surface. But it has a lot of flash and a very unique action. And then the newest twitch bait that's on the market is called the Flat Wrap. And I'm holding one up here. This is the Fire Tiger. It's very bright. You can see that it's chartreuse with black stripes. The fat wrap is called that because if you look at the sides, it's not oval, it's actually flat. And because of that, when you twitch it, it has a lot of side to side action. So this is what it looks like when it comes in the pack. This is the smaller size that I'm holding up right here in silver and black back. And this is the larger size, the number 10. So these are ideal lures, all three series, to use if you're fishing early and late in the year, clear water, especially if the water's colder when the fish are more lethargic, because you can keep that bait in a certain area, we call it the strike zone, for a longer period of time so that you catch more fish. You know, I love to do this twitching, or some people call it jerkbait fishing, because you're always doing something. You're casting, you're retrieving, you're working your lure. And when the fish hit, they usually hit nice and hard. Just lift them up again. The way this guy fought, Bill, I thought he was larger. Bigger, yeah. Yeah, but I think it was the way he had the hook in his mouth. He was using his body. It's one of the smaller fish that we've hooked, but you know, I don't think anybody would mind catching fish that size all day long. Beautiful smallmouth. Very healthy, green, vibrant. These fish are feeding heavily. I was just telling Bill a few minutes ago that only about three or 400 yards going uh, west, it drops off to about 20 to 30 feet. So we're on a big food shelf. So the fish come up here when they want to feed on bait fish. Like where he's got his spine up, nice red eye. And there he goes. You know, one of the best lures to use if you're fishing for fish that live close to the bottom is a simple jig head with a grub, and that's what I'm holding in my hand. Girls, look at this cute little jig head. It's got a little eye on both sides and a curly tail. Now, a jig is designed to do one thing. When you cast it out, it sinks right to the bottom. We're gonna pretend that my hand is the bottom. So once it reaches the bottom, you just pull up on the line to get it up off the bottom, and then you let it drop again. So this is called a jigging presentation where you're not jigging in one spot, you're actually casting it out and jigging it back to you. If there's a fish cruising along the bottom, it sees the jig, it goes over and it normally grabs the jig after it's fallen. That's when it grabs it. So it doesn't grab it when you're pulling it up. And when you go to lift up and you feel something, you set the hook because you have a fish on. Now the key when you're using a plastic grub is to hook it so that the tail is pointing upwards. If I take this grub off the hook and I hook it so that the tail is pointing down, you won't get the action from the curly tail because when it hits the bottom, the tail doesn't have any action. Because this curly tail, when it goes through the water, actually propels around. So I'm gonna put it with the tail up so that when it drops and when you lift it up, this tail flutters back and forth. So jigs work great if you're fishing for fish that live close to the bottom where there isn't a lot of stuff for you to get hooked up on. Okay? okay. All right. size fish. Let's get a double header. <laughs> I'm trying. Boy, these are beautiful bass. He's only got one hook left. That was a nice hit. Yeah, he just nailed it. I'm going to try walking him towards the back. I hate to bother you, Mr. McFarlane. You need some help? But since you got your line in, yeah, if you could just grab the net, because he's a little bit bigger. Sure. I don't want to lift him up because he's got only one hook on there. I think this is a... <laughs> Probably a 1920-incher. You, you knew right away, right, when he broke water when he came up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So and he's bulldogging it now. Okay, say when. Hopefully it'll stay on. 
Come on, come on. Okay. Beautiful. Good net job. High five. What a goal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice fish. We're using this net that's plastic coated, Bill. The same one that we're using yeah. for the walleye. Isn't that a pretty sight? Look at it. That's a great fish. You can say hi, Mom. <laughs> okay. nice, nice shot framed in. They're gorgeous. Okay, I'm just going to get the hook out. Thank you. Okay, you can go back to work now. Okay, will do. Okay. Bill, any hits yet? Nope. Look at this. Such but I'm hopeful. Gorgeous animal. I don't know if I can get my hand underneath. He's probably going to take off pretty quick. Nice small man. There he goes. Beautiful. Bill, that's there awesome. We go. Now, Bill, when was the last time you were bass fishing? Uh, it was about a year ago. Good. Did you have nonstop action like we're having today? <laughs> no. no. Well, actually, you got to admit, we've been getting a lot of fish, but they've been mixed. This is a nice largemouth. Here, do you want to do the grip and grin thing yeah. with your thumb? Just careful. So this fish, I'm guessing, Bill, is about 15 inches. He's almost three pounds. Nice large mouth. Here, look, I got a hook out of one thing and then I got <laughs> back in the other. There we go. He's not a hog, as they say no. in the States, but you can probably see, see the nice line? I'm going to just show the viewers on this side. You can see the lines that they get, especially when they get aggressive. Okay, why don't we get, get him in the back. water? Yep. Just careful, going over the side. I'll move the rod out of your way. Thank you. And he's going to take off probably pretty quick. Old bucket mouth and disappear in that water. There he goes. Well done. Jerkbait fishing is one of the best ways to catch fish, especially early and late in the year when the water temperatures are under 65 degrees Fahrenheit, the water's clear, and the fish are feeding on suspended bait fish. Now, the only thing is, when you're fishing a jerkbait and you're actually producing the action of an injured bait fish, you really should be using a stiffer rod. Now, what I'm holding on here is three different outfits. Two are spinning, one is bait casting, and they're on the stiffer side. The nice thing about the TS2 series that's made by Rapala is that they actually make the outfit so they're specific, that's why they're called TS, technique specific, for the presentation you're going to be making. So you can see here, in little writing, it says jerk bait. You can see it's a little bit stiffer if I shake it and it's rigged with a medium action spinning outfit. So these rods are ideal to use because they're on the stiffer side, whether they're the spinning ones, like the R-Type and the new R-Type reel, or the Avantis Baitcaster. Now you'll also notice, if you look at the spools, that all of them have a braided line. This is the Rapala Titanium Braid, and the reason I'm using a braided line when I'm twitching or jerkbait fishing is because I don't want any stretch. If I move the rod about two, three inches with the tip, I want to move that bait two, three inches because I want it to have the action that I want it to produce so it looks like a real bait fish. So it's really important if you are going to be twitching or jerk bait fishing that you have the right stiffness of rods and that you're also using the right line and you'll catch more fish. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Defend Products, eco-friendly protection from biting insects. You know, one thing that I'm excited about is working with the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry in their Learn to Fish program. This is a fantastic program where they actually have a trailer and a truck and they take it all over Ontario and it's full of interactive activities to get kids into fishing. One is a sport fishing simulator. So it's a wonderful way to get kids into fishing. So I would encourage you, whether you're a dad, a granddad, 
or you just want to help some kids out, or you happen to be in a provincial park, make sure to check on the Learn to Fish program because it's a great way to get our next generation hooked on fishing. Bill, you're so quiet back there. There we go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see what's happening. Stealth. <laughs> you think I'm not going to see you with a fish on? Nice, smallmouth. Back hook only. Thank you for doing that, so I won't have to struggle yeah. too much to get the hook out. How do you like the natural wild sounds? <laughs> can you hear the loons? Wait, that's not a loon, that's a caterpillar. <laughs> you know, you can call this urban fishing, right? Yeah. Nice fish. Here, I'm going to grab the lure. You grab the fish. And then uh, you should be able, actually, I'm going to let you take the hook out. Yeah, Because I know you're, you're good at that. But I used the net just so it wouldn't fall off. You can see why Americans especially love to bass fish. You know, like in some parts of the states, that's a chunky fish. Yeah, nice, nice fish, very healthy. In a lot of the states, when you get down f further south, the water's too warm for walleye or pike or trout, mm -hmm. you know. So they have a lot of bass, both smallmouth and largemouth. Um, and you, the nice thing about the bass is that you can catch them all day long. Yeah, you can release it yeah. if you want. So I'm kind of just... Uh, Happy because it's warmed up. It was pretty cool this morning. Now we got our short sleeves on. Yeah, it's and beautiful. And it's very day. comfortable. Yeah. So here, you know, for smallmouth, we've got a few boats out, but nowhere near the number that I would think would be out. You know, because so many people love to fish and even to fish for bass. But a lot of them don't know how good the bass fishing is on the New York side of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario as well. We'll tube this on the way back, but we won't. I'm going to concentrate my tube down, down further. Still there? Yeah. There we go. He's not huge, no. but that's okay. Okay, cast, Bill, cast. I'm still hoping we can work a double header. <laughs> you know, fishing the Great Lakes. The water's so clear, so you can watch the fish fight, especially with glasses on. It's so beautiful. If you fish any of the Kawartha lakes, even yeah. the Bay of Quinney, you know, the lakes in the summertime get so much algae that it's very hard to see down into the water. <sighs> now this smallie hit another type of a twitch bait. This one's called the X-Wrap. It became very famous about four years ago. It's a little bit smaller than the bait that Bill is casting, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them later. Because depending what condition you fish, using the right type of jerk bait or twitch bait, as some people call them, is really important because they dive to different levels. This guy got one hook just inside the top jaw. Nice smallmouth. Got to hold that lure up beside it so you can appreciate it. See, the X-Wrap has a little bit of crystal flash on the tail. So I think that's what sometimes make the fish actually hit it, because that tail slaps from side to side. Pretty little fish. Let's go back. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Bait Cloud, bring the fish to you. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. You say that you can tell which bass it is by the size of the mouth. But the problem is some smallmouth have pretty big mouths and some right. large mouth pretty small mouths. So I tell people the best idea is if you look at the fin here, the dorsal fin, mm -hmm. the, the large mouth literally has like two separate fins right. where the small mouth is one continuous fin. So that's probably the best Great idea. Nice fish. Yeah. Okay, why don't we get, get him in the back. water? Yeah. Just careful going over the side. I'll move the rod out of your way. Okay. And he's gonna take off probably pretty quick. Old bucket mouth and disappear in that water. There he goes. 